Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Um, so yeah. So I'm Dimple. Um, and you've just been in the world of jujus and charms. I'll take you to the world of Ubuntu and public clouds. Uh, talking to some of you all, I realized some of you all don't even know Ubuntu and haven't heard of it, which is kind of a surprise. And I sincerely hope after this conference, it's no longer true and you really have a feel of what Ubuntu is, what open source is, and you all feel excited about it. So, um, so Ubuntu is in fact very popular and extensively used, not just by developers, but on the public clouds, it is extensively used. So it's like the leading operating system on most public clouds. And uh, a majority of Linux workloads use that. So today what we're going to do is try and figure out why that is true. So we need to understand a little bit about the details. Hopefully, it's not at a level where you get bored, but hopefully you get a feel of how big it is and what goes on behind the scenes to actually uh, get it all out there. So we hope to understand these things. What is Ubuntu? Is it different in any of the public clouds? How is it created? And who helps create it? And most importantly, what need does it solve? Only if it solves some need, it's actually useful. So let's start with what is Ubuntu? Well, I'm going to talk about what is an Ubuntu image, but for people who don't know what's Ubuntu, it's an operating system. So, uh, yeah, so it's like Windows or Mac, but it's Linux based. It's an opinionated version of Linux, so it's an operating system and it's open source. And when I say Ubuntu image, it's, it's an image in the sense it's a ready to launch operating system. So it goes into a hardware machine if you, uh, spawn up an instance on any of the clouds with an Ubuntu image, you can just start it. You don't have to have an ISO or a CD or copy folders or install stuff. It is an image which directly starts. So what does it actually contain? It, it's pretty simple and extremely complex at the same time. But if you look at it, what it contains is just the Linux kernel, which is what you see at the center there. The core kernel, which has all the functionalities of important functionalities, the file system, the process handling, all the drivers. Uh, so all that you usually think of in terms of an operating system, that's there in the kernel. And everything else is pretty much packages. So everything on top that you see, all your applications, all of them are packages. There's also one slight, uh, one thing you see in the center uh, called the kernel modules. Now those are parts of the kernel, but they are not necessarily there. So depending on what hardware you're using, you might need certain drivers for it. And if you're not using that hardware, you don't need those drivers. So in which case you don't need that thing to be as part of your kernel. So those are the optional, the speci specified, specialized drivers, which are the kernel modules. So that's how an Ubuntu image looks like. Now, how is it different in the public cloud? Is it, is it actually different? So yes, it is different. It is quite different in the sense that everything is specialized, optimized for public clouds. So when you look at the kernel, it still has those features, but those features are specifically for, say, Azure or AWS or GCP. Now these terms, AWS, Azure, GCP, IBM Cloud, these are all clouds. They're all big clouds. Uh, okay. And so, so those are now specific kernels which are spe specialized for those clouds. Similarly, the kernel modules, there are specific kernel modules which are applicable for each of those clouds. So now those clouds have their own networking, own, own set of hardware, own set of features that have to be supported. So all of those specialized hardware modules they come as feature-specific modules, and they, there are some examples given there. So all of those are what come into this uh, optimized image of Ubuntu. And finally, the packages. Again, the packages are also cloud-specific. Cloud specific. So you, you need to have something called as a cloud in it. It is, just think of it as a, start, a script which runs at the beginning, the startup, the shutdown, 
uh, the way it configures uh, specific things related, configurations related to that particular cloud or users of that cloud. So any configuration that you have to do right at the beginning when the machine comes up, that's done by the cloud in it and so on. So, so everything in effect is cloud specific. So what you have here is optimized Ubuntu images, customized for each cloud and it includes cloud specific kernel and cloud specific packages. And on what clouds? These clouds. Um, AWS, Google, IBM, Azure, Oracle. So in fact, there are more, but these are the main public clouds, private clouds everywhere, but these are the main ones. Now we look at how these images are generated. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see why you need to know all of this to understand why it is all useful for the world. So um, quick. How is it generated? You take the kernel and the packages. That's what the image is, right? So you take the kernel, you take the packages, and then you include the cloud-specific optimizations, and you build an image. That's what you see there. And once you build the image, you just upload it to the cloud. You, know, you have to upload it to the cloud, because that's where you're going to test it. Upload it to the cloud, test it, and then finally publish it. Once you publish it, everyone gets it. So this is the process, sounds pretty simple. Only thing is you do it every day. And you do it every day, why do you do it every day? It doesn't sound like a thing to be done. But yes, you do it every day, you want the latest and the greatest. But you do it every day mainly because you want to be secure. So anything that changes, you need to have security in your mind. You need to have the latest things. And we'll, we'll see how the every day comes into picture. But you need to do this every day. So, well, as in not you, we do it, but someone does it. Now, this seems simple, but this is, that's not all. There is a lot of work in all there, and a lot of variance, and a lot of, so the idea is you need an image that can support a lot of people with their different applications. So, you might be running containers, you might be using Kubernetes, you might need a real-time kernel, you might need specific uh, standards that have to be complied with, or you might need very small versions, or you might need the, a lot of functionality. So each of those things is basically a different variant of Ubuntu. So there are also appliances. So, or there are VDI is, uh, is a desktop image, virtualized desktop image. So, Imagining all your applications, accordingly you need to create a variant of the OS that will support it. So the OS has to be optimized to support your different applications. So in that sense, there are a lot of uh, variants. And these are not versions. Versions is, are what are released. So, so we have these release types also. So you probably have heard, or you most likely haven't, uh, of LTS releases. LTS means long-term support, which means those uh, images are supported for five years. And if you, well, if you get a pro version, you'll be supported for 10 years, and you get a legacy version, you'll be supported for 12 years. And by support, you mean you're secure, and all of your packages are secure. But LTS is one type of release. Then we have releases co that come out every six months. So if you have seen Ubuntu versions, or if you later see the back of my t-shirt, you'll see there are lots of versions. So every six months, there's a version. It's called an interim version. And we have the dailies. Like I said, do it every day. So we actually have dailies. So if there are updates happening, there are da daily versions, useful for people who want to try the latest stuff. What else? What are, how, many, how many packages are there? Just, just, we are just putting in some numbers there to give you a feel of how much things happen, how much goes into all of this. So a base image has about 426 packages. A minimal image, it's a very, it's a minimal version, which does not involve a lot of actual human interaction. That has 288 packages. And for instance, a Kates node, Kates is Kubernetes, it is about scalability, let's call it. 
uh, has about 470 packages. So that's to give you some idea of the packages. Now the number of people involved. Now this is just um, specifically for creating Ubuntu images on public clouds. The teams that are involved, canonical teams that are involved, like there's a server team, foundations team, our public cloud team, landscape and so on and so forth. There are quite a few teams. There are approximately 2,200 people who work to create these images. And finally, the result is that we generate more, more than 1,500 images daily. Why? Because we have to do all of this. All these variants on all the clouds, in all the different regions of the clouds, and for all the releases and the supported versions. So when you start multiplying all of this, it turns out that that pipeline there is generating 1,500 or more images per day. So that's the sort of uh, work that's going in there. Now that's, well, that's, that's a lot of work. And that's what Canonical does. But that still is not the whole story. That's like just part of the story. Because here, what you're seeing is just the operating system. What about the hardware? So there, there is a big, the, the second half that still remains. So what we just saw was the operating system, the software. The hardware is the cloud infrastructure. And that's where our partners come into picture. So Canonical does the operating system. And then we have cloud partners and silicon vendors. So cloud partners are the ones I mentioned earlier. And silicon vendors are people like Intel and AMD and NVIDIA. They create the chips. Cloud vendors buy those chips, buy the, get that hardware with those chips in. And we give the OS, which supports all of that so that things work. So now, if you want to understand how this uh, collaboration between people, between these entities work, we, we look at a few examples. So let's start with an example. Let's say uh, NVIDIA has come up with this new high-end GPU. So they come up with the hardware, and they need to create the driver for it. And they need to put that driver into your OS, into the kernel. That's where drivers go. So, so what happens is the silicon vendor, which is NVIDIA in this case, they develop kernel patches. And they submit it to the upstream Linux. OK, by upstream. We will we'll come. We'll, we'll see soon enough what, what I mean by upstream and what I mean by downstream. But take it that right now, what, what I'm trying to say is they develop kernel patches and they submit it to the main Linux kernel. Okay, Linus Rovals, he's the main maintainer and his army of people. They uh, they use they they look at those kernel patches if they if they think it's fine, they allow it in. Then what happens? Then Canonical takes that and creates Linux generic, which is based on that, but including our stuff. Then we give it to the cloud partner, so AWS or GCP, whichever cloud wants to uh, test it, wants that new GPU, they will test it with this kernel. And once it's fine, then we include those cloud-specific optimizations to create the final Linux and whatever cloud, that version of the kernel. And of course, and well, there's a feature flag indicating that, OK, now this image has got this GPU functionality available. So that's how, uh, um, that's how the collaboration happens. So here, collaboration is in the sense you don't really see them working together, but at least the technologies are coming together to create the final image. All of this is just creating the final image, what we have just been talking about. OK, now, what actually, um, this is like, a separate, separate domain collaboration. But we have actually pretty close collaborations. So what the sort of collaborations that we do is there are different types of things that we do. So for instance, with our cloud partners, they, we actually, what are the different types of requests that they can give us? And that's what we support. So they, let's say they want to do a platform feature enablement, which means that the cloud comes up with this new feature, confidential computing. Now, again, well, it's, it's just to give you a quick idea, confidential computing, it, it's something recent. 
so you it's it's trying to ensure that your data is confidential even while it is being used so so you can secure it in your memory you can secure it while it's in transit you can encrypt it but once it reaches let's say in the cloud what if the cloud themselves have got some malicious players the cloud has an operating system and the operating system itself can access all of that data so once your data is program is running that program will have access to the data so at that point if you don't want to trust the cloud even or trust the os running on the cloud then you need something called as confidential computing so that's a new feature and it's something that the clouds want to support and then they come to us and we we help them do that we help them do that with with intel and amd and us and the clouds uh or there can be smaller things it's not a complete it's just smaller features that okay i want this specific driver i want this specific package removed i want this added and so on it could also be just bug fixes in any they find some bug fix or their users find some bug and they want that fixed so there is some null pointer exception somewhere or some manual driver installation fails and so on uh kernel patches so kernel patches are so usually um they are security vulnerabilities so uh so if you want to okay let, let, let's it's just assume it's just just a big security problem it's a vulnerability it needs to be fixed it's in the kernel and they are called well they are called cves and they need to be fixed in the kernel and in which case it's a kernel patch a security vulnerability can happen anywhere not just in the kernel uh and finally something like a customer issue that oh i want more detailing about the specific thing could you give me just more understanding about that so it could be any level of uh requests that we receive from the cloud partners and then we help them solve all of that now what is all of this uh leading towards so well you know the cloud public cloud partners and you know these are some of the silicon vendors that we work with amd arm intel nvidia qualcomm and others but these are the ones that help with the public cloud so in effect what we are actually trying to do by working with these people is give a good end user experience so the end user should be able to use all the features that the cloud provides and irrespective of where they are using it whether it's a container or it's some vm or whatever it's it's on kubernetes they should be able to use all of those available features and that we are going to, we are trying to do that by having very close engineering collaborations so our public cloud team actually has weekly meetings with engineering teams from aws from gcp and from azure and different teams from there we have these weekly meetings and our roadmaps are matched so when they decide they want to support a new feature we are included and we help them do that and together we come up with these new features and finally we also have testing and quality initiatives so which is basically once we include the feature they test it and we also test it so they have their own set of testing we have our own test of testing and that's how we ensure that things actually work now we have actually so we, so what have we we have seen what is ubuntu and how is it different uh, who makes it how is it created and all of this but what is the real need have we understood the need that it uh, that it serves or what's the purpose of doing all of this all of this hard work so let's consider um, so to understand that i'm going to consider the needs of a software so let's say you come up with some idea uh and you write a small program for it uh, that's fine it starts it works then you expand it create a actual software out of it and finally it develops enough that you use actually have customers who can use it and you decide to put it on the cloud and make it a soft saas platform so just an example of how a software you, uh, an idea of yours goes through um a software evolution now while this happens what are the needs for this software so initially when it's a program all you need 
is a desktop with the correct tool chains, with the libraries that you need. And the, as, but as it grows into this whole big thing, there are a lot of things that, extra things that come in. So you might need microservices and containers. OK, so don't worry about all of these. These are all related to cloud computing. I'll tell you in short what they are to give you a feel. Um, scalability. So, so when, you want, when your customers start increasing, just one server might not help. You need a lot of servers, so you need to scale up. High availability is, oh, what if the server goes down? There should be a backup somewhere. So quickly, it should switch over. Maintainability. So with time, your software may remain the same, but the dependencies of what libraries are, is it using, those libraries might change. They will have patches and bug fixes. So you want to ensure that your software still works. That's maintainability. Security. You want to save yourself from cyber attacks. Confidentiality. You want to ensure that your data, your user data, all of that remains confidential, uh, remains secret, and is not exposed. You decide one fine day, oh, everyone's doing ML, I want to do ML. Machine learning. Or maybe you actually have a use case, and it's actually point, there's a point to do it. So you need to have support for ML workflows. And finally, your software grows so much that the governments become interested in it. And at that point, you need to have standards and compliance. So the governments won't let you uh, run your software unless they have a lot of standards implemented. The, the way your software is written should follow certain standards, mainly about security. So all of these are the needs of a software as it grows. And how do we support this? The first, first thing a desktop, Ubuntu, as a developer a desktop is like, oh, I would have assumed it's the most basic thing to use. It is that widespread. So that is taken care of. But for the rest of the things, what I'm proposing is you need Ubuntu on public cloud. So for all of those other things, Ubuntu on public cloud helps you get all of that. So just we'll look at, based on what we have seen till now, how do we get some of that? So let's start with security and maintainability. So this is, you need a little bit of understanding of uh, how the code, uh, how, how the things work. So now I've come to the upstream and the downstream thing. So most of the code is available. Uh, the kernel, the packages, everything is available. It's all open source. And usually the main person who, let's say, created it or maintains it is called the maintainer, and that's the upstream code. And everyone else who wants to contribute they fork it, and they become contributors. So the thing you see there, they, they, are, they are all downstream copies. The contributors are, have the down, downstream copies. And they make their changes, and they submit a pull request to the upstream. And then if the maintainer is happen, happy, they take it up. So that's how your uh, normal process for changing things happen. Now we are looking at how things change because we want to consider security. We'll come to that in a bit. So, like I said, most code is available on places like GitHub and Launchpad. Anyone can file an issue. So like uh, these contributors are anyone. It could be you and me. It could be those public cloud vendors. It could be Intel AMD. It could be Canonical. Canonical could be the maintainer and the contributor. Similarly, anyone can be the maintainer and anyone can be the contributor. And they will make the updates. And what are these updates? Updates are everything that we talked about bug fixes, security patches, new features. So usually new features will only come in new versions. But if it is a security patch, it is backported to older versions because you want to be secure. So security can't be uh, just in the new versions. Because your software is written in an old version, you want that to be secure. So your security patches have to be backported to the older versions. So how do you make, your, make sure that you have security? You basically use the latest version. And you do that by syncing regularly, and maybe even daily. And maintainability. And how do you ensure maintainability? Well, you do the same thing, because all of your, you just use the latest versions. And if you are on an older version, 
user version that is supported and if you, when it when we say it's supported it means all the security patches have been backported to that old version so uh, in lts pro versions just another number there there are over 25000 packages which uh, are supported so it's not just ubuntu that is supported there are a lot of other packages in the universe it's called the universe repository which is also supported so if any problem occurs any or bug occurs in any of those packages we go and ensure that it's all fixed and this number can actually be much higher now what about the other needs quickly we had container containers and scalability and high availability and machine learning workflows so all of these are basically features that the cloud provides you just have to use the correct ubuntu image which is optimized for these uh, use cases so there's just some examples so kates cluster is a kubernetes cluster it will have so whether it is aks or eks or gke or iks these are all different kubernetes uh, for each of the public clouds we have got specific images for them so you just use the correct image uh, then all of these features will uh you will start getting those features confidentiality now that's something uh, i i explained a little bit about confidentiality but you need support there from the actual silicon vendors because they are the ones who um ensure that your data which is your program when it's running it is safe by running it in a hardware trusted execution environment so that they create it's it's a it's a hardware based solution so everything is in that trusted execution domain and that is created by people like intel uh, intel tdx it's called and amd uh, so so they make it and then ubuntu supports it the cloud partners take up those uh, those specific chips with those enabled extensions and your confidentiality is available and finally compliance compliance is again something about how your software is written so that is something taken care of by canonical so we have modules cryptographic modules which follow the standards that are required so in effect are we solving all the needs the set of needs that we have mentioned and i i propose that ubuntu and public cloud is the solution so is it solving all the needs yes because all of them are working together so this left left set of things the high availability microservices scalability all of this is a combination of canonical with the public cloud security compliance and maintain maintainability those are things that canonical does and things like ml workflows now ml workflows need um high end gpus and they need those high end network adapters so you have nic that is network cards which can be split across people you have specific gpus which can be split across nodes so all of that requires silicon vendors requires cloud partners and support from the operating system so so things like that and like confidentiality these are things where all three of them come together and provide that need so it does seem to be useful it does seem to i hope i have convinced convinced you that it is useful and in effect what is ubuntu on public clouds it is just a set of optimized ubuntu images built in collaboration with multiple entities and it caters to a variety of customer needs and that's it for me thank you and if, if you have any questions please please feel free to ask i'm not sure on the time but and if not i'm here for a couple of days <laughs>